lens gets so much stuff on it so quickly. Uh oh, I'm at a nursery. Don't know how much filming I'll be doing, but look at, aren't these nice? Nice clumped up fishtail palms. Oh, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, here I am. Just a quick drop by, wanted to see if they had any tropicals that I could use in some planters that I'm doing and I figured I'd take the camera out. There's a very noisy cart over there. Adenidia palms, and there's a couple majesty palms, some great big hibiscus. Nice looking plumerias, like really nice looking plumerias. Don't see them this big out here very often. Usually it's just sticks. More hibiscus, oh, and they're actually labeled. That's nice, you can look up what kind they are. Those said Mandarin wind on them. Very pretty. Oh, those look nice. I don't know what I'd do with them. I don't think I have the sun for them, but they're beautiful. Ugh. Love the purple. That's a nice color. Some huge cannas. It's nice to have those as an option if you don't start them out from the rhizomes. That's tempting. They're variegated. That's kind of sort of what I was going for. I need something that's like a limey green color. That's kind of that, sort of. Lots of cordelins. I see some foxtail palms inside. And cute little tiny petite oleanders. Portulaca, I love portulaca. Hey. Apparently that's all I had to say about that was just, hey. Eucamus. Look at the tiny little magnolias. These things are adorable. Do we have a variety type? The tag's all... That's all. That's kind of gross. Those would require a lot of patience. It's really loud here. It's the highway and the music, so... I don't, I don't know how much else I'll be showing, but I'll try. Oh, little pineapples and olive trees. Lots of justicias over here. Several different types to choose from, too. Houseplants. No, y'all like to see the houseplants. Nice looking monsteras and dracenas, some stromanthi, dracena, really nice ficus back there. Philodendrons, pepper, I mean, the, this place has it all. All of the houseplants, they have them here. Oh, hello, oh, that's too much, too much, back it up. That's better. That is a really big goldie eye. Look at the foliage on there, really pretty. It's a really nice looking plant. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think they actually have too much. I really have to be fast. Wow. Look at that. Never seen a painted lady this big and mature before. Never been a big fan until I've seen one that's nice and big. That's really, really nice looking. I like those leaves and the color of the stems. Beautiful. Oh, and a ring of fire. Wow, they're on top of it. On top of all of the trendy things. Pink princess. Are there prices on these things? 75 okay. It's not terrible. It's one of those plants where I'm starting to see them for as low as 30 bucks at some places, but that's still about right. Look at you. Who, what is it? What is it? I really like it. I think it's a Gigantium, right? I think so. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Gigantium. Which is why I like it. They have the Rapid of Four Decursives. Decursiva over there. Oh, look at the gingers. I know, I'm trying to buy trendy, rare plants. That's all anybody's gonna wanna see. I'm gonna have a look at those gingers though. That's what I'm here for, but there's some more of the other things. Philodendron Narrow Escape. It's a neat looking one. The Gigantium. I'm sure you're wondering how much the Ring of Fire is. I have no idea. I don't see a price on the pot and I'm sure it's expensive. I don't want to break it trying to find the price. Same thing with that Painted Lady. I don't see a price on it. Nice little Alocasias. And then Hostas. It's a nice contrast, right? Hostas. Trendy plants. Loving the look. Nice little baby Kentia palm. I love a Kentia palm. Last one I got had so much scale on it that I ended up saying screw it. I didn't feel like messing with it anymore. But maybe I'll get another one someday. Hey, Pothos. Oh, the Rimbets? I haven't been seeing many of those this year. When I have, they've been in tiny little pots. I just, well, you, gotta, you gotta get up close on these Costas. 
Those are beautiful. Oh, look at the little baby palms. Little Arikas and lady palms. Enjoy pothos. Lots of, I mean, you can see it. I don't have to point out all of them. Aw. That's a nice looking little Adenidia. I like when they get the skinny, I mean, you don't want them to get the skinny trunks, but I still like the way it looks, even though it's not ideal. Beautiful philodendrons. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. What is that, a silver sword, something like that? That's beautiful. I don't know what it is, but it's beautiful. Serendipity, maybe? I've never seen one this small before, but they have that kind of silverish sort of thing going on to the underside. It's kind of like the, what is it, Yucatan princess. Hey. I like those. Nice leaves on those. And then more of the fun stuff. Wow. They're nice. Was not expecting to see all these plants over here. Some really great looking stuff in here that I was not expecting to see. Well, hopefully this was fun for y'all. I'm gonna, oh look at the Fright X and the Hilo Beauties and more of these shiny things. Prince of Orange and then Bromeliads. That's what I'm here for. Okay, I'm gonna start loading my cart up, get back to the house and have some fun with some new plants. Okay, one last thing. Look at this Hoya Carii. Look at that. It's beautiful and it's $375. Hey Turbs. How you, okay, feel like holding still, huh? That was an adventure, can't even see that. I tried to, I got a new orchid. Isn't it beautiful? Kind of dark, let me turn the exposure up for just a moment. Get a better look at it. It's a really nice orange color. Lots and lots of speckling on the inside. Still has lots of buds left on it that are yet to open, have yet to open. What variety of orchid is this? I know y'all didn't, I know people are never here for the orchids, but I like to show them off when I get them. This is an uh, Oncidium Orange Delight. I think that that's what that says. Pseudobulbs, pretty shriveled. Could use some hydration. I don't see orchids for sale out here very often, other than like the Phalaenopsis orchids that you see all over the place. But the Oncidiums, which are my favorites, because they can be just a royal pain in the butt. I don't see them that often, so I picked up one of those and a few other plants happened. So here's what happened at the nursery. Don't worry, we'll get to the rest of the plants very quickly. It turned out that the plants were like 75% off. So ended up filling up three different carts. Didn't have much room to sit in the car on the way home. And here's what happened. I wanted to get more, but this was all I could fit in the car. It's only 10 plants if you count the orchid. And not a lot of diversity here either. Just got enough to do some things with. Grabbed a couple of the nice big cannas. These are the Bengal tigers or the Pretorias. Beautiful variegation. Look at how large and established those are. Those beautiful plants, gigantic. Then a couple of Cordelin fraticasas. Don't know what variety, doesn't say, but they have really nice foliage and uh, some fun variegation too. Doesn't that look nice? Nice deep red leaves on them. And then the red button gingers which were only like, I think they were $9 a piece. I wasn't gonna get any, but then I was looking at them and one of the employees walked over and she was like, do you know what those are called? I was like, yeah, I think they're red button gingers is probably what they would be listed as. And then she went and did some things and came back and she said, oh, I just looked, they're $9. So I went from not wanting to get any of them because they were $30 to being like, okay, I'll take all three. Why not? The more the merrier. It, doesn't it look nice? Same thing with the alpinias down below, which are, their leaves are folded up, the morning sun's on them. When that moves off, those will flatten back out and look a lot nicer. This is so nice. It looks so good. I don't have any intention of keeping the plants set up like this, but it looks good. Even though I got these to do different things with, it's, it's gonna be difficult because I'm digging this. Like, just like this. I think this looks fantastic. Like I said, I got them for other things. I wanted to possibly, potentially, get some things planted up here underneath the queen palm that got repotted in last week's video. That fun adventure. And then I have the two big blue Miami planters down there, which that will be in a separate video. So I just have to make up my mind about what I'm going to do with what, and uh, then we'll follow up on all of that. It's not going to happen in this video, only because what I decide to do with the Miami planters, those big blue planters down there, I want that to be its own video 
and if I do something with some of these in this video, then it's gonna leave it pretty obvious what I, it's just gonna take away the element of surprise. So for now, they'll just, they can just sit here and that's fine. I think they look nice. I'm gonna enjoy having them here for a couple days. A lot's happened since the last clip, which was filmed roughly two weeks ago. Not quite, almost. So uh, here's what happened. Went to the nursery, y'all saw that. Had a little plant haul. Y'all saw that, and then the next day went to a baseball game. Had a great time. Pujols hit a couple home runs. It was fantastic. Next day, had a little bit of drainage. Throat was kind of sore. Didn't think much of it because generally after I go to a baseball game, my throat's always sore and I start to lose my voice because my seats are right underneath one of those sofa-sized speakers, so you just have to scream to talk to anybody. But I took a test just to be safe. It was negative. Next day, took another one. Negative. Next day, took another one. Negative. Then the next day, throat was hurting a little bit more, had more of a cough, took another test positive. I don't think we're allowed to say the C word on here, so you just have to figure out what I'm talking about. I don't know, YouTube's weird with their rules. I'm not sure what's allowed and what isn't in that area anymore. Like, it wasn't allowed for a while, and now it is. Anyways, long story short, everything's fine. It felt like bad allergies, but I did have a bad reaction to a medication that I took for a cough that was keeping me up at night that was given to me by a doctor. It just, it, I don't know what happened, but for whatever reason, the medication to make my cough go away so I could just get a night's sleep. Just one night, the only one was just one night of sleep because it wasn't a bad cough, it was a dry cough, nothing productive. They weren't worried about risk of pneumonia, or respiratory infection, anything like that. For whatever reason, this medication made me cough more than I've ever coughed before in my entire life. Like four hours straight, almost every breath I took, cough, cough, cough. So the next day, my throat was raw and uh, the vlog was supposed to come out the day after that. It wasn't going to happen. I couldn't even speak. My voice needed a few days to heal after all of that. So the worst thing that happened to me with all that was just a bad side effect to a medication that doesn't normally have any bad side effects. So that was fine. Not the end of the world. Everything's good. I'm glad that it wasn't a big deal. Turbo, what you doing, baby? He's worn out. I got him a bag of balls, tennis balls, like, you know, the ones for dogs. Big bag of 20 of them, and he just ripped the whole thing up. Now there's tennis balls all over the patio, and it really... That was, that was good for wearing them out. So all is good. Virus is out of my system, took a test. It's negative, safe to go out again. It's been about two weeks, like I said. I haven't gotten anything really done out here other than the one video that I filmed and got out last Wednesday. This is pretty much the same as it was during the last vlog. Just a nasty looking pot from this thing. If you don't know, this got repotted in the vlog, not the last video, but the vlog prior to this one and uh, most of the plants are in here got destroyed. So I would like to fix this up, get the front of the pot looking nice again. If it were earlier in the year, I'd just say, you know what, no big deal. They're impatiens and caladiums. These are gonna spring back. They'll look just as lovely as the plants on each side within a few weeks, several weeks, really. But I don't, it's not, it's, we're almost into September here. I don't have that kind of patience, not even with impatience. I don't have the patience for the impatience. I need instant gratification here. So I, of course, went to another nurse. Oh, also there's a kitten. I have to talk to y'all about that in a little bit too. Lots of pumpkins. I cannot wait until the next garden tour. There's lots of gingers and pumpkins. Since I was in the clear, tests were negative, all that stuff. Still wore a mask, even those outside, blah, 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 blah. I went, I, I picked up a few more things. Look at, look at all of it. It is nice, right, Turbo? You're getting your face right up in there. I wanted fun, colorful zinnias. I can't get into the mums. Zinnias, I can do. They're summery, they still work for fall. And I wanted things that would draw on the pollinators because the butterflies, bees, and hummingbirds are everywhere out here right now. So that's, well, that's what happened. All of this. Magellan mix zinnias. They're not all Magellan mix. That's what a lot of these are. There are 13, no, seven of them in here. I have this awesome red cotton. Have you guys ever seen these before? The flowers on them on it. Isn't that cool? Can we see it? There it is. It's got cotton pods on it. I don't really know what I'm going to do. That was an impulse buy. I'll figure out something to do with that. I just thought it'd be a fun plant to have. It wasn't very expensive. Everything else is either for here, for planters I would like to do, or for something I'm going to be doing at my sister's house here fairly soon. So the zinnias looking beautiful. And then I got a couple of these fantastic violet cascade budleas. I've always wanted some of these, but I've never been able to find them in big enough sizes. I like Cascades, one of my favorite of the Badleas. They have some of the biggest, heaviest flowers on them. These are small for the Violet Cascades. They're potted. But a few years, when these have been in the ground, the flowers on them get really big and round, and they, they cascade. Very, very, very big, long flowers on them. They have a long bloom season. They smell nice, too. It's very mild, but it's a very sweet 
fragrance. And of course the pollinators really enjoy them too. And then just because I liked the flowers on these, I grabbed two. Where's their tag? Ekebekia, pardon the sun. Summerina Sun, sun Chaser. Turbo, get out of there. Get out. That's not for you. Get out. Look how awesome the flowers are on those. Great big flowers, some wild looking petals on them. Supposed to bloom summer through fall, and they are perennial zones seven through nine. So maybe a perennial here. I'm in 6A, 6B. We generally have zone seven winters, but you just never know. Every few years we have winters that are absolutely horrible. So uh, we'll see with those. I grabbed a Coreopsis here. This is one of my favorite varieties. It's called Fall Sensation Sandstone. The flowers are like a salmon-y. They're maybe like a Sedona sunset. They have some yellow and then some like terracottas and some pinks in the mix. A great drought tolerant plant. I don't know. This one probably isn't going to be staying. My yard is very wet, but I have a family member with a very hot dry yard and I think they're going to like that. So that's what that one's for. And then a white gumfrina here in the middle. Don't know why I got one. I needed five. I just, I forgot what I was doing. I got over one by plants. And I grabbed another spider plant. That's for the iguana. The iguana and the tortoise, I let them munch on the spider plants and on the pothos. And I'm supposed to rotate the pots through the cage. Like once they eat them down about 50% of the way, you need to pull them out and switch them so they can regrow. And I forgot, so I needed to get a new one so I can start that rotation over. So that's as beautiful as it is. Don't get attached, it's about to be eaten. So there it is, isn't it fun? So much color. I would like to use a lot of what's over here and that queen palm pot. So I'm going to pick out what I like from over here, get it over there and I can play around with some things and see what I can come up with. All right, as per usual, I know my eyes are bigger than my planter, but I think you can make this work because there's not that much time for any of these plants to do anything, which is also why I'm not in here working with like bromeliads and all kinds of fun tropical plants I would love to put in this, but just doesn't make sense to me when there's only like maybe six, potentially eight weeks left of having this outside before the frost rolls in. Now I want to just plop things in here that are going to look good right away. So the impatience are going to come out. The caladium, that's, I'm going to do my best. So I need to get all this stuff out. This elicums, that's toast. All right, there it is, blank canvas. I really want these butterfly bushes in here, even though I know they should go into the ground, but they can go into the ground in the fall. There's still plenty of time to get these plant. You can't see that, oops. There's still plenty of time to get those potted up after the pumped. Palm trees are normally taken away to the greenhouse mid-October somewhere in there and still keep plopping perennials into the ground until generally mid to late November around here. So I'm not concerned about that. I'm wondering if I should unpot. No, I shouldn't unpot it. I should leave it in its pot. I have the two, so I may as well put the other one in here. I also need to make sure I'm not clogging up the drip here. I need to have that accessible to everything. You see that there's already butterflies landing on this. You can't see that. Even on the right, there was a butterfly there. Try and make a video and everything just goes to hell. I already love that. The purple and it smells nice. So I'm getting that same effect I was getting with the alyssum that I had to pull out. But really, I would say these are more fragrant than the alyssum are. So, okay, I have one, two, three, I have six more plants I want to try and get in there. I don't see that happening. What am I gonna do here? I didn't, I never gave the name of the gumfrina, I just said it was a white one. It's called Ping Pong. How cute is that? Ping Pong White Gumfrina. I think that this is a biodegradable pot that it's in. I don't, I don't care about that. I, mean, I do, that's a nice feature, but I'm not gonna be putting this in the ground. It's going in a pot, so I don't expect the pot to do any biodegrading here. I'm just gonna try and see if I can't. Okay, it's really stuck in there. And that's just, a, I don't know if this is biodegradable. That was just a guess. Doesn't it look like it? Probably. It'd be smart if there'd be some sort of symbol, something to that effect on these pots so that people would know. This is just a general tag. Doesn't say anything. It smells so good over there. I know I just said that, but it's still it's like it's soaking into my nose whenever I get my face in there and I'm working on getting the plants put into the mix. I'm just going to set the Ekebekias in here. I don't know if I'm even saying that right, but I have a feeling I'm gonna to wanna to pull those and use them in something else here in a few weeks. So they're just going to sit in the back. Aha, uh -huh. I like those colors. Working nicely together. And now can I fit a crap ton of zinnias in the front? Zinnia, zinnia, how do y'all say it? I might, these, I don't know, that might have to go in there last because it's in the way. These zinnias aren't huge. Oh look, they do have labels. Magellan cherry, that's what this one is. None of these are plants where I'll want to be disturbing the roots very much, so I can't squeeze them in too tight. Oh, that looks nice. I'm gonna have to figure out how to make that work. Yep, 
that was worthwhile. Made it all fit, barely. Come on, look at that. Isn't it just beautiful? So much color and texture to pink Magellan Mix Xenias on each side. This one's just an assortment of Xenias, Xenias from the Magellan Mix in the middle. I thought that would it could have some color, but it wouldn't be like too much. It's by having most of the assorted ones in the middle, not most of all the assorted ones in the middle. The Ekebekias in the back that I think go great with the violet on this Budleia. Isn't that just fantastic with that gumfrina in the middle? Ping pong gumfrina is just so much stinking color. Look at that. Like, come on. That's good. I like this. I know it's not like the normal tropical thing, but I'm good with that. I think that I like this more than anything I would have been able to pull off for a heck of a lot more money trying to fill this up with tropicals. There just isn't much of a selection this time of year. You all saw all the stuff I got at the beginning of the video. Beautiful plants, the gingers and the cannas and the cordolins and whatnots, but those weren't going to fit in here. And I think that it just would have been too much when they're raised up this high. It would have looked off. The other canna though, see I stuck one right here. I'm thinking I should put the other one back there. I have a dragon wing begonia just sitting there. I might pull that out so that the canna's on each side. I'm not crazy about the Pretoria canna right next to the yellow bamboo that I don't, I don't like those together at all, but I do like that they close the gap off and they seal things and it just creates a nice wall here. And I like the changing leaf pattern between the bamboo and the canna. So at least it has that going for it. Oh, now I'm wondering if I have this begonia stuck into the drip because if I do, that's not going to be very easy to remove. I'm not just going to be able to lift it out of here. So here's hoping the drip isn't actually on there. Is it? Nope. It is not. Try and drop this in here without hurting the butterfly bush. I think that should fit okay. Yeah. Got that dropped in the place of the begonia. I think that that looks much better. More even. Look at all the color. So much color. The butterflies, bees, and hummingbirds are going to be all over this in the morning. I love it. This is fantastic. No speller, no trailer. It's not something I see a lot of this time of year can be harder to find. I did see some of the trailing coleus at one of the nurseries and I thought about it, but I don't know, it just isn't a plant that I was all that into for this kind of a setup. So I figured, you know, no trailer's fine. I'm sure I could pull some creeping Jenny out of the yard. Maybe I'll go look around the yard, see if there's any creeping Jenny I can just dig up. Nope, didn't find any. None that looked good enough to dig up anyways. So that's this is fine. Of course, now that I'm looking at it, it's bothering me. But when I was out at the nursery shopping and wasn't seeing much as far as the trailers go, I was like, oh, it's fine. Don't need it. Not a big deal. And it isn't a big deal. It's totally fine. The reason I didn't really explain this, and I suppose that I should, the Budleas and the Ekebekias, they're not potted in here because I do want to try them as perennials. So just have to wait until it's time to put the palm tree away. Oh, I did. I kind of talked about that. Sort of. Also, sunwise right here, it might not be ideal for them, so I might have to pull them and move them elsewhere. This spot gets a good amount of morning sun. I mean, it's enough to keep the impatience going, which doesn't say a ton because impatience, you know, they can take some shade. But also, like, the can has been sitting back there for about two weeks. It hasn't stretched itself or gotten wonky or anything like that. So I figure that means that the sun should be okay here for everything. If not, it's not the end of the world. This is an arrangement that's not going to be around for too terribly long, unfortunately, just because it's you know, so late in the season. And the other reason is because the uh, Budleia and the Ekebekias, they're not going to want the same kind of irrigation that's running to the rest of this container. The queen palm gets a lot of water. It's a, it's a tree, you know, this thing's 17 feet tall. Lots of water goes through the drip and I think there'd be too much for those. So they also need to be set up onto their own drip or I'll actually probably just hand water them because they're both very drought tolerant plants that shouldn't need a, much water at all from the drip, especially now that things start to cool off outside. I love it. One of my favorite things I've done out here this year, just color. I keep saying it because that's, that's what's making me happy. It's just so much color, so much color and texture. And I think that that looks nice with the impatience on each side. I'll get these gingers moved around and have those placed and we'll do that next week for that vlog and play around with the tropical plants some more. But right now this is, this is good. My heart is full and it smells great. And I cannot wait to sit outside in the morning and see the butterflies, bees, and hummingbirds all over this planter. That's going to be glorious. Love the ping pong gumfrina. It's just little white balls, but it's just, I did something about it. It's just cute. Great description. It's just cute. That's all you need to know. Some of the other zinnias I got to plant 
over in this area, but I have to hold off on that because I mentioned there's a kitten. Here's a background on the kitten. A few weeks ago, probably more like two weeks ago, it was right before I got infected, I was walking across the driveway and uh, underneath the car cover, one of the cars has a cover on it, there's this tiny little black face staring up at me with these green eyes and it vanished, like the blink of an eye. So it's one of those things where I was like, is this, did I just hallucinate? Because it happened so quickly. And, but I, I thought it was like, was there just a cat under here? I didn't know. And then another week passed and uh, Turbo was over here and talked about this in my prior video. He was hanging out right here. Like he was about ready to pounce and then he did pounce. He jumped, did a belly flop into the gingers and a tiny little black kitten went, phew, ran across here. And this kitten has been hanging out in this area right here for about a week now and it's hanging out underneath the house. You can't really tell from here, but it can get under the house from over there. So it spends a lot of its time underneath the Robolini palm. I can see it from inside the house. It plays with Pumpkin's tail through the window. It's stinking adorable. Very little. I'm not saying I'm gonna keep this cat. I have to catch it first. So I've picked up a trap, a humane one, if you don't know. This is, it's not going to hurt the kitten. I'm gonna get this set up over in that area tonight, put some food in there, hopefully catch the kitten. I'm not necessarily going to keep the kitten, so don't get excited about it. It's gotta to go to a vet, it has to stay separated from my other animals, have to get it checked out for FIV, feline leukemia, all that stuff, get it vaccinated, warmed, the whole, whole thing. So I may not be keeping it, uh, but I will definitely take care of it until a rescue group can take it or until somebody wants to adopt it, like I'll foster it, something along those lines. I mean, I think we know I'll probably end up keeping it, but I'm just saying there will probably be a kitten, hopefully, to play with and look at here in a week or so, depending on how catching it goes and how everything goes with the vet. So that's, that's, I'm, I'm so excited. Are you doing your stretches? Turbo, do your stretches, do your stretches. Yeah, good boy. Nice stretches. Good boy. Never finished my point with the zinnias. I started talking about the kitten. So those other zinnias were meant to go right in this area, and the kitten has been hanging out in this area, so I figure I should wait until I've caught it, because I'm probably going to have to put the trap right where I want the flowers to go. That's all that that was about when I went off onto that other tangent there. And uh, Turbo, I almost called him Tucker. Turbo, he was reprimanded for trying to jump on top of a kitten. He hasn't done it since. He's seen the kitten plenty of times when it runs across there. He lays inside and watches it through the window very calmly, peacefully, not worried about him going after the kitten. Even then, I think it would have been a like a, oh, I caught something and oh my gosh, it's a cat. And I don't think he would have heard it, but you never know because he's, he's only a year old, but he has been around a lot of animals. So I don't think you would hurt it, would you, Turbo? No, probably not. You're a sweetheart, Turbo. And then there was something over here I forgot to mention. I don't remember what it was. It's when I was pulling up the plants. Oh, the caladium. So the caladiums, I always plant those extra deep inside the containers of the plants that go off to the greenhouse for winter storage. And normally those come back next year. So I was pulled the foliage off, but its root or its bulb is still way down there in the soil. And it, I mean, it probably doesn't have room but it'll probably try and put some more growth up this season. I would imagine next year it'll still be in that pot and ready to come out. The trailer thing, it is the more I think about it, it's really starting to bug me. So I will be on the lookout for something to have spilling over the front here, just something big and very full because the entire point of this was, I don't really have time. None of us have time, it's the end of the year. Don't have time to wait for things to grow and fill out. I want it to be something that's already big and established and can drape very far down the front of that pot. And I don't think I'm gonna find anything like that, but if I do, it, then I will get it and put it in there. That's gonna do it. I know, crazy video all over the place. It's just the way things go sometimes. The nature of the vlog anyways. I love how this came out. It's very different from the rest of the yard where it's just like tropical, 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 tropical. And then like this little country kind of cottage vibe going on. And I'm good with it, it's colorful smells nice, pollinators are going to be all over it. Something different and that's what I love about it. It's nice to be able to look around the yard and see different styles in different places. It does disrupt the flow of things somewhat. It's just being tucked over here in this corner with the impatience on each side. I actually think it works just fine. And it's instant gratification, which that was, that was the whole point. I really hope I can get this kitten tonight so I can get into a vet sometime tomorrow. Should I name it Bellini? Cause it's been living underneath the Robolini palm. Not a huge fan of that name. Not a drink that I really go after, but seems fitting. Or maybe gazpacho or thumbtack. Getting ahead of myself. Again, thanks for hanging out. Hope y'all are doing well. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. You started your fall gardening projects. To me, this, in my mind, this is fall. I don't normally do anything like this unless it's fall time. 
it's a, I guess, a summer fall hybrid. It's really mostly just the Ekebekia that's giving me the fall vibe, but that's, that's about as fall as things are gonna get out here. Hey, right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.